so you're ready to make a map, but the wiki is too wordy and the videos are too dry. Well, I'm going to show you how to get started making maps in Chrome Mapper. No time to waste. Quickly, I just want to say thank you for 100 followers. It's the first big milestone on this journey and I'm here for it. So I'm glad you are too. If you aren't subscribed, you should click the little red button to check out what I do next. Anyway, let's get to it. The links for everything in the video will all be in the description. The programs you need are Aero Vortex, Audacity, and Chrome Mapper. You will also need a legal file of the song in an OGG format. This can be done by exporting it as an OGG in Audacity. And you'll also need a PNG of the album art. We need to make sure that you don't have a hot start. At the start of your map, give enough space for the player to get ready. So we need to know how much space to add to the beginning of the song to one, give enough time, and two, make the beat line up with the guidelines. To do that, open up Arrow Vortex and drag the song into the program. If you only see lines, click on View, then Time Based. Now you can see the waveform. To get our magic number, click Tempo, Adjust Sync, and then Find BPM. Make sure the BPM with the highest percentage is highlighted and click Apply BPM. And also remember the BPM for later. That extra space we're looking for is the music offset. Let's get that to two seconds. Click the one up arrow until the number goes above two. This is your magic number. Let's double check that our song is lined up by checking halfway through the song. Scroll down and press space to start playing. If you don't hear the ticking, press F3. And if everything lines up, you're ready to move on. Now let's hop over to Audacity. Drag your file into Audacity and make sure your playhead is at the beginning by clicking on the audio and pressing home. Now click on Generate, Silence, and add your magic number right here. If you forgot, you can go back to Arrow Vortex and open up Adjust Sync, and it'll still be there. Now just click OK, and the space will be added. At this point, you can do a bit of volume adjustment if necessary, but now we export our song as an OGG with the name song.ogg, and just save it somewhere you'll remember. Now we're ready to open up Chrome Mapper. When you open it, you'll see all of your work in progress maps and all custom levels, which is helpful if you want to go look at something another map did. Click on New Map and enter the name of your song. Next, you'll be shown the song information. Fill out the song artist and your name as the creator. Sub name is where you add the names of anybody who helped with the map. After you filled that in, click Save. Open up the song folder by clicking on Open Explorer to the right. Drag the song file and album art directly to this folder and rename the album art to cover.png and close the folder. Click Save one more time and your check marks should show up. We can set up our song preview by setting the start time and length in seconds. This is what plays when you select the song in the play menu. Next, type in our BPM that we found in Aero Vortex, and lastly, choose what environment you want and save one last time. The right side is all of our different maps for the song. Across the top, we have Normal, One-Handed, Dot Note, 360 Degree Mode, 90 Degree Mode, Light Show, and Lawless, where anything goes. Under each of those, we have our five difficulties, which can be renamed after you activate them. At the bottom, you can adjust your jump distance and note jump speed, which both affect how fast the blocks come at you. The typical values for jump distance will be shown if you hover over the question mark. Don't worry about the other stuff for now, that's a little more advanced. But now we need to save the difficulty by clicking the floppy disk next to the difficulty, and you'll see the number of maps increase to one. Now we get to the fun part, opening up the editor. Highlight your desired difficulty and click Open Editor. Click Yes if it asks you to save. First, I'll show you how to navigate the workspace. If you hold right click and move your mouse around, the camera will move. Then you can use WASD to move left, right, forward, and backwards. Space will move you up and Control will move you down. If you let go of right click, you can press Space Bar to play and pause the song and the scroll wheel will move through the song. 
Now that you're comfortable with moving, let's take a look around. All around you is the environment you chose, so any objects or lights for that environment will be shown here. So all the way on the left in orange, we have our song waveform. In the middle is our lane track for blocks, bombs, and walls. And on the right is our lighting event track where we put all lights and environment effects. These vertical walls are our insert marker, and that's where we place our blocks and lights. Let's go over all the stuff around the edge of the screen before we hop in. The top left shows what the last notes played were. This can help make sure that your next block is facing the right way. Moving right, we see our scrolling intervals. These break down each bar into different note lengths. When we scroll with our mouse, each click will move that far. So for example, we're at 1-1. So when we scroll one click, it'll move one full bar at a time. But if we change it to 1-4, we'll move one quarter note or one quarter of the bar at a time. And you can change these quickly by holding control and scrolling up and down. You can also press X to switch between the two intervals that you have. This can be handy to switch to a higher value to scroll a little faster. So the next section is for our lane objects. We have blocks, of course there are left blocks and right blocks indicated by these colored blocks in the middle. Then there are bombs, walls, and delete. When you have one of these selected, you can place them on the lane track. With walls, you can click to start it, scroll, and then click again to finish placing it. With blocks selected, you can use WASD to choose what direction you want the arrow to be pointing, and you can also press two keys at a time to make your diagonals. And lastly, you can press F to choose a dot note. The same keyboard shortcuts will also work for the light events. So we have on, off, flash, which you can think of as a fade in, and fade, which is a fade out. Float value is how bright the lighting event is. And laser speed affects the speed of any rotating lasers. Transition is a way to add a fade from the old event color to the new color. Mirror will mirror any selected blocks or obstacles to the other hand. This is pretty useful when copying sections. This little lock icon, I have no idea what this little guy does, but he's cute. Anyway, in the top right, we have our map information, and along the bottom is our timeline and our song time. You can press escape to open up the pause menu, and in the options, you can see a full list of all the keyboard shortcuts. Take a few minutes to look through these, and it'll make your life a little easier. You don't have to know all of them, but definitely the common ones, and if you can't figure out how to do something, this menu could definitely help. Let's talk real quick about selections. You can select objects by holding shift and clicking, or you can control click to set a starting point and then click somewhere else on the track to select all items within that range. With objects selected, your cut, copy, and paste shortcuts work just like normal. And always remember to unselect everything by pressing control A. Otherwise, you'll accidentally be copying and pasting stuff you're not trying to. One last thing before I move on to some tips for the mapping process. If you press tab, a side menu will open. Here's a strobe generator, which can be useful for color gradients. This is also where you can add chroma colors to objects and events, where you can set any color to any object or light event. There's also an option to switch the song wave to the other side and to host a collaboration session, but this isn't available on dev releases. When you first open the session, I would set up all of your bookmarks. Bookmarks help you know where important parts of the songs are and help you jump from section to section. You do this by scrolling to the point in the song where you want the section to be, then press B. Here you can add a name and color. I normally place a bookmark every eight bars with the name of the section. Find a good bookmark system that works for you and stick with it. If you place a bookmark at the wrong spot, you can middle click to delete it. Once I have my bookmarks set, I place dot notes throughout the whole song to get a feel of what sounds I want to represent in the mapping. I then go back and start figuring out what patterns I want to use one section at a time. After I make a first draft of the whole song, I move on to the lights for a little break. If you place an on event, the lights associated with that lane will turn on at that point. Same with an off event. A couple tracks are just a toggle that will affect the environment, such as ring rotation and ring zoom. Laser speed is how fast the lasers will be rotating. Choose what speed and then add it to the track. Every time there's a ring speed event, it will reset its rotation, like this. 
I like to match certain lights to certain sounds in a song, and I would also suggest doing the lights section by section. Once you feel like you're in a good place with the map, you can give it a try. Open up Beat Saber and the song will be in custom songs in the playlist Work in Progress Maps. This will give you a good idea of mistakes or issues that you didn't notice during mapping. After testing, open the map back up and make any changes you noticed. This can be a very long process of fixing things, maybe changing complete sections or implementing walls where you think there should be some. This is where you'll be spending most of your time. But once you think you're ready to have others test it, you can zip it by going to the song info page and clicking create zip. This will make a zip in the song folder that you can send to play testers. The best way to get your map play tested is to put it in the Beat Saber modding group discord test plays channel. This is where an unbiased person can play your map and will help you find any issues you didn't notice before. Once you're ready to upload the map, just make sure you have accounts set up on Beat Saber and Beast Saber with the same username, then upload it to Beat Saber and it should auto sync to Beast Saber. And now you've released your first map. You want to make sure that you check out the basic mapping page of the wiki to see the forbidden patterns. As there's a lot of patterns that you definitely want to avoid because they can risk breaking controllers or even physically hurt the player. Also check out this video where I compared famous mappers early maps to their current maps where I saw what they had changed to make better choices in their current maps. You might pick up some more tips on how to make your maps better. Thanks again for getting me to 100 subscribers and if you aren't subscribed, well, well I guess you're just missing out. But you totally should. Bye!